And we are back, folks, for another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study with my man, Vance Bedford, breaking it down like always, like no other, giving you that sort of exclusive fan <laughs> understanding of why the Michigan defense did what it did. And what they did last Saturday was beat Ohio State for the third time in a row. Beat Ohio State without their head coach. Beat Ohio State without their linebacker coach. And then the last quarter basically beat it, beat Ohio State without all Big Ten corner now. He hit, was just named an all Big Ten corner, Will Johnson. Let's see, here's the thing, fans. They had a, another all Big Ten performer in Mike St. Ristol slide out there and hold it down. So uh, that's the story of this defense. So many contributors, and they went on to uh, make their way to another Big Ten championship game. Vance, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. As you can see today, I got my little buddy right here. Here's my killer. 13.9 pounds of tiki of muscle. Tiki, say hello to the people. There you go. Good job, buddy. <laughs> hey, look, look. That's a nice cue, see, because, you know, tiki need a nice new bone. Tiki needs, you know, all kinds of treats. That's why I always say when we do these film studies, I tell the people we don't own the footage that we show you, we just use it. We just borrow it for your entertainment, your education, and your edification, all right? No sponsorship, no kind of advertising dollars at all, at, at all when it comes to these videos. But if you want to help fund the film study, F-U-N-D, fund the film study, all you have to do is click on that PayPal link right there in the comment section or the PayPal link in the description of this video. And it will take you to the fund, the film study PayPal page. That way, we can keep these film studies going, right? You know, take time. Hey, hey let's yeah. keep these studies going. Hey, Sam, I told you earlier, I had a text on uh, Instagram from Ohio State person who watches this show. And so, I, you know, I followed him back. He said, hey, coach, can you come coach at Ohio State? Now, you know I could come coach at Ohio State. Man, I'm amazing blue through and through. Who are we talking about? But I appreciate it. So. Well, a lot of Buckeyes down there. They be checking you out. They know your content is for free, 100%. Yeah, they don't They don't like me, but they watch me. They all, <laughs> I, I'm cool with it. You don't got to like me. Just keep watching, Buckeyes. Keep watching. I'm actually, I actually kind of like the Buckeyes, just in case y'all didn't know. I love it when y'all talk about me. <laughs> I mean, so keep watching, please. That's all I'm saying. All right, Vance, we got to dive in to this uh, this third victory, the Wolverines. It was a closer game. I'll give Ohio State credit for that. Uh, but the defense showed up, did a good job on number 18. That's going to be a, a real theme to this uh, film study because he's their most dangerous, rep dangerous weapon, best receiver in the country. Had five receptions for 118 yards, but I think that's a good day at the office against a dude that good. You know, that's a great day in the office. What we did, we, we took away key possessions, key plays by taking them out of the game. We rolled to him with some three clouds, some cover six, quarter, quarter, half. We doubled him. We did different things, which actually confused the quarterback. This is the first play we're going to tell us straight right here. This is an RPO, okay? So as you look at this particular situation, we got double on 18. That means everybody else is flat out man-to-man -man across the board. Both the linebackers got the – Tail back. Everybody else is man to man. The safety is over the top. So when you look at this particular formation here, you can see we talked from game one, Sam. Look at the receiver. Look, look at 18 at the top. Mm -hmm. He's outside the numbers. He's over split. The only place he can come back is inside. Then you look at the back. The back is even with the quarterback, which means either pass or they finna run stretch to the other side. So RPO. And this is not really a run pass option. Run pass option means that a quarterback is involved in run. This is more of a play acting pass. This quarterback has no intention of running the ball at all. Now, as I was watching this play, I had to turn the announcers off on television. They had no clue what was going on. They said, oh, what a great job. Will Johnson, he knew what to write. He jumped the route. Well, Sam, it's double number 18. He's, he's heavy inside. Now, if I was a quarterback coach, this is RPO, Sam. And Al talked about this also. Look where the state is aligned for Michigan. Mm -hmm. He's deep and he's outside the pass. That's an indicator that he's a half-field guy. 
So the quarterback coach did not prepare this kid to see the entire picture. So as a quarterback, he should look in the secondary. Sam, as you look at this, what do you see? I see to the field. I see the corner playing man-to-man technique. I see the nickel fat playing man-to-man technique. I see the safety playing man-to-man technique. I see the other safety outside the hash mark, and I see the corner heavy inside. I see the back is flushed over to the back. Those are all man-to-man indicators for a possible double. That kid had no, no idea what was happening to him. So he should throw this ball away. Because the read is that the backer, what he did is that I should throw the RPO because the backer dove for the die. So to him, if you play in zone, the slant should be open. Mm-hmm. But he never read the safety. So let's let this let's let this run some All right. So you got the line. So we're gonna show that you can see the entire play right here. It's the RPO. You can see the slant by 18. Everybody with 18 gave up on the play. 18 should have run through Will Johnson. How? Look at, Will, look at Will Johnson, the lineman. He has his outside foot on the receiver's inside foot. Sam, he's heavy inside already. That guy can't get inside. This is on the quarterback and the quarterback coach for not teaching the kid about a recovery. Now, this is something new they hadn't shown. But again, from a quarterback standpoint, I see a safety outside the hash deep. I see a corner up close. I see all. All the backside man to man. That's what I see. He should have saw the same thing that I'm looking at because he's a quarterback. He's been starting. This is his 12th game, right? Mm-hmm. So he's not a he's not a young guy anymore. He's had 11 tough games on his belt. So now you can see right now both linebackers got the back. We man to man across the board. We got a double on number 18. And how they did the double in this particular ball game is the safety was over the top, almost like a half field player is what he was. So they made sure they took away all his inside routes when they had to. But his split tells you you got to come back inside or he's just a decoy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. Let's let this thing run, Sam. And I just don't understand what this quarterback and a quarterback coach is teaching this kid. I just don't get it, Sam. I just don't get it. That man heavy inside. Mm -hmm. You see it, Sam? Sam, Mm -hmm. he he can't get inside. And then Marvin gets a loaf. He never made an attempt to tackle a guy. I mean, and, and I, I'm not, I don't coach there, but when you watch Marvin play, he loafs a lot. When he's not involved in the play, Sam, he takes plays off. He's st- he going to stay fresh for when it's a pass play. <laughs> I'm just being honest with what I'm saying. So that, that's on the coaches. But again, you can see a good picture right here. Okay. That kid, he got no chance. Now, he should have fought harder, maybe try to strip the football, which he didn't do. He didn't fight for the football. See right here? Sam, he just gave up on it. See him stop? It should be, he should tackle him right there, trying to strip the football, but didn't do that. But again, this is on the quarterback and the quarterback coach. They weren't prepared for this coverage, but the quarterback should have read this because if it was true RPO, the quarterback would have pulled the ball down and taken off running. He would have ran this football. He, yeah, he, he would have had some green grass too. Yes, he would have. But again, run pass option is nothing but triple option. So, in other words, the quarterback, the, the fullback, the tailback, so that's a dive. Second thing is he's a read, and technically the receiver's a pitch guy. Yeah. It's three parts into this particular play. And this is not true RPO. So the quarterback had no intention of running this ball. Yeah. Great call. So they so you definitely give Will credit for being on his assignment. Yes. Kicking the pass off. But what Al was talking about was the man. He, Jesse Minter, he, you know, in, in the chess game, that was on this play, it was checkmate. Jesse yeah, Minter was. OC over there. On right I tell you, Jesse has done a great job in this game. And people were saying, how come we not blitzing more? Well, we didn't blitz more because the game plan was to take 18 out of the game. So in other words, we played a lot more coverage than we normally do to stop the big play by 18. See, 18 is beating a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So we made sure we didn't make sure he didn't beat us. He had some reception, had one touchdown, but it wasn't plays that could actually beat us. 18 is beating a lot of people. And also we game plan to take away Trayvon Henderson. We made sure he didn't have any big catches on checkdowns or big runs. So the game plan was to take away the two best players, 
In key situations, that's exactly what we did. And that's why we won the ball game. Great yeah. job by everybody. All right, Vance, let's go right back to the plays for the people. Okay, here we go right now. So we're going to see this play back to back because the next play is going to be very similar. See, right now, we, we are in, in, in the top of the red zone area. So right now, as we see this play here, okay, this is over six cloud. In other words, we are rolling to the field. Cloud taking it to the field. Technically, it's quarter, quarter to the boundary, but they play it like man. Okay. Now, what I want to point out to everybody is this. You see the two and three receiver. Remember, from you come from outside in, let's go to the field. That's one. Marvin's on the hash. He's two. The next guy's three. So technically, you got two and three close to each other, really inside the hash mark. That's an indicator. Okay. And then you look at the back. The back is deep, but he's also wider. Now, the indicator of high potential for pass. And the offensive line, anytime you got a tackle to the tight end, he's sitting high like that, it's another indicator for pass or it could be drawn. So the line right now, you can see three guys blocking to their left. The left guard tackle and center blocking left. The right guard and tackle are blocking to the right. And we're just basically in an over front. So here we go, Sam. Let's let it go. Let them see the routes. So you can see right now, stop it right there if you can. So this is this is double dig. People call this drive. In other words, it's one guy doing a shallow crossing route, or one guy running a dig. So this is like a middle flood, but it's also a flood to the boundary. You know, we've talked about this throughout the year. We hadn't seen a lot of this. This team actually attacked us into a boundary. So at the end of the day, we have three receivers to the boundary. Look at the back. Wheel route. That's number one. Tight end. Deep route. He's number two. And here come Marvin Harrison. He's three. So they are flooding the boundary. So it's a good concept. It's a great concept. This is a drive concept, okay? Let's go to the defense, Sam. But here we go right now. So we highlighted Marvin. That's where the ball should have gone. They throw it to the tight end on the vertical route. So right now, you can see Will rolling up on number one. The safety's half field. Mikey on the hash is a curl player. Colston is a three-hook player. So anybody from one, two, or three come back inside shallow, he has to wall that particular play. Okay, technically to the boundary, Barrett should be a quarter flat player, but they played this like man-to-man. -man. He took the first guy inside. It's like they talked about it and said, hey, you got the inside route, I got the outside route. So my man Wallace, he took the back on the wheel. Okay, the backside safety on the hash, he's a quarters player, but he's playing robber. So in other words, he's looking for two or three. If anything deep comes between two and three, he would take those guys. So we are overloading the coverage to the three-receiver side, and in essence, playing man-to-man -to, -man to the boundary. So let's let him run, Sam, and see what happens. Again, good adjustment. Okay, I highlighted Colston because it's going to show up on the next play. He's responsible for anything coming back inside. And see how you see see how he takes uh that's running back same. See how he takes Marvin coming across. Mm -hmm. Go back. Watch how Colston takes Marvin coming back underneath. I want you guys to remember this because the next play he didn't do that. So let it go, Sam. That's that's watch Colston first. See, watch him. See him taking him right there. See, that's a good, good job. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. And now you can see the uh, backside safety takes the dig, the robber got the dig by the number three receiver. Let's let him run and watch him, Sam. Let him run and watch him. Watch the backside safety this time. He's a hat on the hash into the boundary. Okay. Watch how he robs. See, he's looking. Mm -hmm. He takes the dig. Boom, right there. Okay. Let's go back one more time. And this is Barrett where, where he got he has hands like me. Ball hit him in the hands, and he dropped it. I mean, I did a whole lot of that when I was a player in Texas. I mean, I dropped a whole lot of interceptions. If I'd have caught half the ones I, I hit my hands, I'd have been an all-time interception leader in Texas. But again, this is a great job here by, by my man Barrett here. This is a great job. I mean, he is in great position. He wall the guy off right here, and you're gonna see the end zone copy. See, look at Wallace takes it back. Barry, this is a great job. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding play by him. Okay. But what should have happened, in my opinion now, for the next play is that Barrett should have taken a back 
and Wallace should have taken a tight end if they playing quarter. But they just manned up. They might talk it through. Hey, you got the one come inside. I got the one outside. Let's go play ball. It worked out perfectly. Okay, now we're going to the very next uh, comparison. This is in the fourth quarter, which is a touchdown. Now, freeze it right there for me, Sam. As you can see, the formation is pretty similar. Except one, two, and three will cut their split just a little bit. Two and three are inside the hash mark. This coverage is the same. The coverage is going to be the same. So in other words, we are in, in six in, in a six robbery again. So here we go, son. Let's go talk about the offense again. Let's see the routes. Okay, over six cloud. Here we go. Again, the offense blocking the same way. Freeze it right there, Sam. So this time, you got to dig by the outside guy. 18, we call it a drive route. In other words, he is doing a shallow crossing route. The guy inside of him either does a post or a dig. Okay, to the boundary last time, the tight end went vertical. This time, the tight end is running a dig route. Okay, the back is doing the same thing, a wheel route. Okay, so again, you can see the concept is pretty close, a little bit different, but it's still in the same concept. Okay, so here we go. Let's go to the defense, Sam. Yes, sir. Okay, to the field, the corner's rolling up again, like last time. Okay, we're throwing it to them 18. We talked about the previous play and what happened. So here we go. The corner's rolling up cloud. The safety's a half-field guy. The nickelback is a curl player. He's right where he needs to be. My man Colson, again, is a three-hook player. In other words, he has to take any shallow cross from one, like he did last time. Okay, the backside safety, a quarters player again, but he's robbing. He's robbing because technically his number two guys on the ball is to that side. To the boundary, you got a fourth, and you got a linebacker, Barrett, who's a quarter flat player. Last time, they might have met a call, so we played playing man to man. But this time, Barrett's going to push through to the first guy on the flat, which is the back, and the cornerback is going to take the tight end. So here we go, Sam. Let's let it, let it ride. We're going to highlight Colston again. Okay, so here we go. I mean, yeah, so you got highlight on Barrett right there. Oh, Barrett's going to go down the flat. You see, see what Colson does this time? See him drop deep? Mm -hmm. You don't have a chance. You don't have a chance. Last time, he took him a lot quicker. See, what that, that's a weak, that's a boundary flood. So last time we talked about how, see the tight end, he's one. Mm -hmm. The back becomes one, the tight end's two, and there's three. And see, on Colson, we put what? Three hook. So therefore, he has to relate to number three. You can see the backside states is doing what? He's robbing again like he did on the previous play that I showed you. Okay. The cornerback this time is taking a tight end on the vertical rock. See, Barrett is a quarter flat player. They ran him out of the play. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the only guy that can make this play is Colson, the three hook player. Last time he took him. This time he drops. So the guy got across his face. It is a foot race that he lost. So I want to put those plays back to back just to show you the concept, what we're doing defensively, and at the same time, how we played it each time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The first time the ball should have gone to the May team. This is a play stricken for him, but the quarterback got greedy. You know, sometimes when you get greedy, man, the needy going to miss out. <laughs> Okay, a great, great lesson that we just learned there, and I'm sure that they are learning in film study. Let's go right back to the plays, and this time, man, this how, many lightning have, two how many times have we done lightning this year? Man. A bunch, and this, I think this is either the third or fourth time in this game that we ran this stunt. Now, the offense, they checked to this play. They had a whole different play call. If you see what, if you see right now, look what the receivers are online. See the receiver to the fields where inside the slot. Look what he just did. Mm -hmm. The back was to the field. He switched to the boundary. They saw the coverage because the backside safety on the ass. He showed where he was going, so they knew right now we're going backside. We're gonna go match protect. We're going for the vertical route. So this is. Lightning two rolls. So we bring him technically 
four from the field is what it looks like as an overload to the field. It's a great run stunt is what it is. And if you catch them in the right type of plays, it's good versus pass. Okay, so here we go right here. And I know a lot of people saying, man, Barrett should have been in the game. What is he doing in the game? If Barrett was in the game, the same thing would have happened to him too. Okay, so here we go right here. So right now they check to this. He has no chance. Majority of the time in this particular stunt, the corner to the boundary is a half field guy. But because he's so close to the line of scrimmage, it's like he's playing man to man. So that linebacker, he don't have a goal. He does a great job here. But he don't have a chance. He really doesn't. That's a okay. tough situation. That is a check. They check to this play, execute it. Good call, good adjustment by them. Let me see what happened to my to your telestration. telestration. We had a telestrator, but it just yeah, 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 yeah. We we had a telestration to this. Hold on a second. Let me see what happened to it. But again, we are blitzing from the field. See the safety right there? He is telegraphing what's going on. So Wheel is rolling up as a cloud. The field safety is a half field guy. The backside state is coming down as a curl. Okay. We angling the front to the boundary. Little Mike is off the edge. Coast and the linebackers in the B gap. The defensive end to the boundary is dropping to the flat. And technically, on paper, if you're doing a clinic, the boundary corner, that cornerback to the boundary, he's a half field guy. But he's too wide and too close to be a half field guy. So the pressure is on the linebacker on the tight end side. He don't have a chance. He didn't have a chance right now. He's in big trouble in Little China. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. I will try to get this telestration to us so that people can can get the visual cues of what you're talking about, Vance. Because I, you know, you, you mentioned it. There was a, a play with number 30 before, and I think it was a run play, like a play or two before this, where I think it was Trevion Henderson made a miss. And uh, mm -hmm. and, and got loose for a nice game, and then they came right back, and it was just yeah. it was noticeable that he was the one in coverage. So it made you think, oh man, well maybe maybe they're just picking on him, but it is worthy of note. Yeah, no, it, it, this was a check. They had a whole different play call when the backside state just showed what he was doing. They checked to his play, and because of where the corner of the line, that backer right now got to realize I got to stay right with this tight end. He took a step inside, and it was too late. He ended up making a good play on this situation. But this was a good check to this defense by the sideline because, again, this is, I think, either the third or fourth time we ran this defense. And the first two times was great success. Mm -hmm. So this is an adjustment they went into with the game plan to, to make this call. And they did a good job right here. I got to give credit what credit is due. And, and so you said, right you said something important also that – that needs to be, you said the the safety showed his hand you see it right now see where he's aligned mm -hmm. he right now he started coming over he's already to the field in the curl area so they done this throughout this is a staple of part of our defense we run uh sam cover three or we run lightning two roll and it shows up that safety has to come over and be a curl player to the field and when you do that you know, right now to the backside, that corner's a half field player. The outside defensive end to the boundary going to the flat, and the backer is the curl clutch to that side. Because you're getting, it looks like play action pass, it freezes that backer for a count. But to be honest, what he should be doing because the front is angling that way, you tell the guy, play behind this plan. In other words, don't move. Your response will hold this tight end. But you know what? That's all clinic talk. Okay, this one has. They got kids, and they're going to do what he just did. So this one has a telestration on it. Just had to redo it again real okay. quick. Here we go. Yeah, now we got it. Now it popped up. Yes, sir. So you can see right now. And they're going to be a max protect. So the back, he coming all the way to block the mic off the edge. And they're going full vertical right now. Okay. So this is the check. If you saw the previous shot, the receiver was inside the hatch. Mm -hmm. And they saw the look at the back side, take the shoulder. They checked, so he, he widened his alignment. They're going four vertical right now. It's four vertical versus two deep with a corner been a half field guy. And the corner is too wide to play half field. So it's an automatic throw to the tight end right now. That backer, I'm sorry, he, he's in trouble. 
You can see our blitz to the field. You can see Lil Mike is off the edge. You can see Colson is going right now in the B gap and the three down line on the angling back to the boundary. This is a great run stop. And if people can read it, anytime it's four guys on the line of scrimmage, like they have the receiver Z, tight end, two guys to the field, they go for a vertical. If you don't get home, it's a tough, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Because right now they got enough guys to block it. They go full slide to their right with the back blocking off to their left. They're in six man protection, blocking five guys. So you can see the coverage. Yeah, that that linebacker got it. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see what I'm yeah. talking about? See, he, yeah. he's in a no win situation. And you can yeah. sit back and say, well, you tell a you tell a linebacker because a blitz play behind the slant. See, he steps that way. They have good tight ends. If that was Loveland from the University of Michigan, that might have been a touchdown because he's a better tight end. I mean, it's tough. It's tough play. Yeah. It's a tough play. So that See right was, there. That was where you tip your cap to that call. Yep. The safety showed it. They checked to it. They had, and they had the perfect play call. Yeah. They probably practiced in practice. You get certain looks and they show this. We go for vertical tight end right now. We're going to take our chance because the corner's too wide. He can't help you out. Yep. Hey, man, lessons. We learn lessons in these sessions. All right, so now we get to some some show plays, Vance. Bring okay, now, in here. this play here, this is, we wanted to just show more plays, so it's not a lot of illustrations. This play here is double 18. So when you say double 18, as we showed on the interception, that means everyone else is straight out man-to-man -man with no help anywhere. So we double number 18, and you can see the slot to the field, number two. Freeze it right there, Sam. That means the guy on him is straight out man-to-man -man by himself with no help. And what Ohio State is doing is this particular place is called, we call it a swap boot. In other words, when a receiver from the field goes to the boundary behind the line of scrimmage, okay, that means to the front side, to the boundary, the extra receiver on the cut split, He's looking to pick anybody on that guy. He's going to come across and kind of like he's stock blocking and try to pick out the linebacker, then he goes to the corner late. And the quarterback is booting out that way. So people complain about this guy. Like, Why is he in the game? Little Mike should have been in the game. If Mike was in the game, it's a good chance the same thing would have happened to him. I sit back and I'd be cracking up with people complaining about everything. Look at the play and what's going on. It is almost impossible for that guy. He does a great job. 18. That's a great job. And they're in the open field. It's just a two or three yard game. But the problem is you're in the red zone on three yard line, so it's a touchdown. He couldn't have done it any better than that. Because technically he's in no man's land right now, playing man to man. That's a good call by them against the coverage that we had. Can we double number 18? Everybody else is in zero coverage with no help anywhere. And you can see the tight end is going to pin that defensive end so the quarterback can get outside. You see that? Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, 18, son, your hands are tied. That's a tough situation right now. Mm -hmm. That is a tough situation. He did the best he could do because he had to run through a lot of bodies. He right. had to run through our bodies of, of our defensive backs and linebackers. He had to run through the body of number four. There's a lot of traffic in there. And they had a good play call. You got to give them credit right now. They executed it. They had a good play. I'm not mad. I mean, sometimes they're going to make some play. All right. Okay, here we go right now. Okay, freeze it right there, Sam. So right now, not right now, we are in cover six. In other words, we are rolling to number 18. Okay, so it's half field to the boundary. It's quarter quarter to the field. You can tell how to look how the safety is line. So you know right now it's quarter quarter. So in this situation, I'm surprised that they didn't run more of this. In other words, right now, as you can see, they got a stack split. In other words, you see 18 on the ball. And the receiver stack right behind. Because they did that, right now, we'll say, I can't walk up and reroute my man Marvin. So Marvin is getting a free release. But I want you to think about this. As a defensive back coach, you always say the guy on the line of scrimmage normally is the guy that's going to go deep. The guy off the ball is the one who's going to do a shallow crosser. He might go five yards to the edge, or he might run some type of dig. The guy on the ball is normally the guy that's going deep. So if you had to do this all over again, you know what you could have done, Sam? You could walk up and still re 
throughout 18. But most people not going to do that if you don't practice that. So right now, Will, you're like, they got a stack split. I got to see the wing, the number one guy. So he backs up and outside. So now we let this run. This is what's going to happen. 18 is going to go vertical and then stems outside. Freeze it, freeze it, Sam. See, right now, freeze it. The old adage is, if they even, they leaving, he's even, he's going to left the bus station. He left Will at the bus. <laughs> We're going to catch the bus this time. So right now we're in trouble because 18 finally got a free release. Mm -hmm. And he gone. He is gone right now. So right now Will's in a chase mode. And see, the safety, nowhere to be seen. The safety in the – the safety should be still over top. Go back, go back, go back. Let me go back, Sam. Let's go back. I'm sorry. I got to go back. Okay. I got to go back, Sam. Keep going back, all the way back. Now freeze it right there. Now, I want everybody to, to look at this formation. Look at one and two to the field. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. When one or two got cut splits like that, do you realize if you had 10 plays, maybe one of them might go for a vertical? From those splits, they're telling you right now, we're not going vertical, Sam. We're doing some maybe some type of dig routes, crossing routes. That's not a vertical formation. So right now, the safety, the half field safety, stay deep. The backside safety, if number two not vertical, based on where the quarterback looking, he should have helped out on the post pattern by the wing behind Mark. Okay, so let's let it run right now, Sam. So they're again a lot of indicators. The formation is telling you there's not a full vertical formation. <clears throat> look, look at number two and number one to the field. They're not going vertical. We can gain the backside safety because you know what kind of drill we in right now, Sam? Two-minute drill. If they're not going vertical, that means somebody, somebody, somebody on the field going vertical. So the safety left my man Will out to drive, who's technically a cloud corner. <clears throat> so there are a lot of issues with that particular play. And again, give Ohio State credit, great design. They worked, and they made some off of it. And I'm surprised that they didn't go back to that formation in the second half. Sometimes the offensive coordinators got too many plays, they forget what actually worked. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just being honest. It's just on good. That play should have, they should have run that about five times in the second half. But again, when a play works, you know what you should do offensively? Circle that play. Circle that play. Now, th this is a touchdown. They had a long drive right here, okay? And this is the last play of this particular situation. The play before went for about eight yards on the inside zone. There's nothing more like duo, okay? Now, remember going to – on that Friday, we talked about their off – look at the offensive line, okay? So they're in run mode, flat back. You look at the tight end. He touched the hip of the tackle, so you run right now. The issue you got right here, the three technique went inside. He was a big gap player. He sent it to the A gap. And why he did that, maybe it was a call, maybe it's a bust, but you can't do that down there. Yeah. You can't do that. So I don't know if it was a call. They were told him to go inside. Did he do it on his own? I have no idea. But that was a problem with the defense. But you know why he did that overall? These guys are tired. Mm -hmm. This is like a 10 play drive. And yeah. throughout the year, how many times we've had a 10 play drive? We have. We weren't able to substitute. Those guys had their hands on their hips. They were bent over. Right now, Ohio State is pounding us pretty good by running the football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got that one off, Vance. It was uh, – uh, but that that was when – that was a turning point in the game. They had that drive. Michigan came out offensively, went right back down the field, and then the defense came back on the field and got that three and out. Yeah. Uh, and, and Michigan went down and got a field goal. Now they're up 10, and Ohio State is – you know, they, 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 I think that the doubt started to creep in. They still had a right. drive left. It, in. It's like, if I had to turn neck on, I'm like, I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was right now. They got tight. Like the man said, it was like being Janet in a drum. They couldn't get out of that thing at all. Now, freeze it right there, Sam. Right. Do you remember on Friday, we talked about formations? Okay. So they're in a bunch formation. Everybody see where the tight end is? See the tight end, there's space between his helmet, and a tackle. That means there's a good chance 
he's going to come back across in some form or fashion. It could be boot, but we know from what we saw, counter. Look at the back. The back is where he's deeper. You remember all the pass plays we've seen so far? He was almost even or a little bit wider. So, again, run indicator now, just going back. From things we talked about on last Friday, get ready for Ohio State. So this is this is the counter play. Again, tight ends alignment and the tailbacks alignment. See the counter? So again, indicators about what they could do. Little details of the game that we talked about, you know, on Friday, and you're seeing it right here. Counter play. Defensive end, that's a good job. Now, who my linebacker missed that tackle? That's strictly on him. That's strictly on the linebacker. Defensive end, he does a great job. He actually, technically, he got two pullers. Number 30, some blocked. I don't know. He must have had his eyes closed, saying, where are you going? The defensive end didn't do a good job. He did a great job. Freezer, he got both pullers, Sam. Yeah. He got You can't play it anymore. You tell a guy, get the second puller, he did. If 30 is scraped outside of him, it's a TFL. He buried himself inside. That's Man, I, this, I think this is probably the play. More than the play after this, which was the four verts. Yeah. They got him. So the four verts, you said, wasn't that, you know, anybody would have got to be on that. But this, this play strictly was his run fit. Yeah. He buried himself. The defensive end, you can't play any better than that. You say, you see the second puller? He don't get around. He got two guys. Yeah. That was perfect execution by the defensive end. That's my boy Mike Elson Baller. Got them boys coached up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's keep it rolling. Right now, we're in low two robber here. This, this is on little Mike and running back. Okay, he's to the boundary. Okay, little Mike is to the boundary. Because now, run it back again and see if can get freezer for him. Okay, now, stop right there. Stop right there. Okay, now, where is Marvin releasing, Sam? He's stemming where? Inside. Inside. You a cloud corner. When that guy releases inside, that means he's not going just straight vertical. You with me? We had talked also earlier in the year, I mean, earlier on that Friday, about they do a lot of high lows. We call it smash. In other words, a low route five yards deep to hold a corner, and then number one run a corner route. So as soon as number one stemmed inside, you know what Mike should have done? Gain width and depth to the sideline. Because how much time left on the clock? 56, 54 seconds. And as you can see, they have no timeouts. So the guy, technically his rerouter, might gain width and depth back towards the sideline, make him throw it to the tight end on the hit route. But look, what, what little Mike does, see how he's squeezing the route? Technically, he's out leveraged right now on the corner route. Let it run. See how he, right now, he's in trouble. That's, that's, that's all his play. This is Mikey's play right now. As soon as Marvin was stemmed inside, get off of him, gain your width and depth right now, Mike's going to pick this ball off. And he also, he's watching the tight end a little bit. So he put himself in harm's way by his initial technique, by where his eyes went. Because right now, again, it was 50 seconds left. They have no timeouts. Anticipate the ball, corner routes. They got Marvin isolated by himself. That's the reason why. And here's the last play right now. We're in low defense. He's back in the two robber concept. This is double D. Great job. Great job right now. It's a great job by the front. This is low defense. And they couldn't block. We ran low defense three snaps in a row. We got close almost every single time. The quarterback couldn't step through. The offensive line couldn't block the stunt. We had a robber coverage on. In other words, that safety, he was looking for any dig routes by reading the quarterback's eye. And this is a great job by him. We got great pressure. We got an interception to end the game. I'm like, this. You have played great all year long. They finished the game off by having the best unit on the football field. Mm. That was a great finish to the game right here. But again, it's low defense. So you got three guys to, to the right. Look at the stunt. Oh, that's a great stunt. Look at the pressure. That's a great stunt. The safety. Right where he needs to be, reading the quarterback's eyes, even if we didn't have pressure. Marvin not catching this football. Mm -hmm. He's not catching this football. But you can see what, what, what my man Marvin did. Instead of running through, trying to strip the football, just like on Will's interception, 
Sam, he pulled up a little bit. Watch him. Watch him. Run through. The game on the line. Run through. He doesn't run through. He doesn't finish. He could have made a difference in the play for Ohio State, but he didn't. So the two interceptions quarterback threw. Guess what receiver was involved? Marvin Harrison Jr. And mm-hmm. both times he didn't finish. That's on a receiver coach. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's great, Sam, not being a coach. I can sit back now and <laughs> analyze. Hey, man, Marvin finished, baby. Are you going to go ahead and go to the NFL? Of course, he's not coming back. He's talking about, I got it. That I didn't finish the right way. Marvin, we know you're going. People say you're a top 10 pick. If you're a top 10 pick, you're going to make $20 million. You're going to come back to the field, you're getting hurt. Maybe you yeah. Now, my only thing about Marvin, if you said the other day, how fast did he say? How fast you think Marvin Harrison Jr.? Uh, I bet you he's high 4-4. Four, four. High 4-4. Four, 4-5 four. Four, flat then. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And when you compare him to all the other first-round receivers the past four years come out, coming out of Ohio State, his, his catch radius, I think, is more. Mm-hmm. He's long. He's a great route runner. Okay. He has great body control. I think some of the other guys have more top-end speed. Yeah, but athletically, he's as good as any of those guys right now because it looks like when I watch this game and some other games and watching him, he didn't always play hard. And sometimes you got a great player, you don't coach him, and you kind of let him get away with some things that you don't let other guys get away with. And watching some of those things in this game on a two interception, he didn't finish certain situations, which led to, which helped lead to two interceptions. It wasn't totally his fault, but it helped lead. To in just an opinion of an old guy sitting here in Loveland, Colorado, just enjoying life, baby. That's all. <laughs> so uh, just your thoughts before we get out of here, Vance, your thoughts on the matchup with Iowa. They they struggled offensively big time. No, they did Sam, they, Sam, they, Sam, they didn't struggle offensively. They were just awful. <laughs> hey, be honest. They didn't struggle. They were awful. I mean, I'm, I'm just being frank. And, and I don't know if you remember last year's game. Last year's game was a battle. Mm-hmm. They played great defense, and on offense, they got two twenty-two personnel, two tight ends, two backs. They just tried to run the ball, shorten the game, go play action pass. They had a little success, but at the end, we were just a better football team. We're gonna see the same thing in this game. I think our defense needs to get some turnovers. They need to get some takeaways to shorten the field for them. Because defensively, they're gonna either run quarters or quarter, quarter half. They play total matchup underneath. They they don't make a lot of mistakes. Then they're going to want zero. When you think it's a pass situation, they bring the house. And so they're going to get out there it's pretty good. So our defense and special teams, they got to show up. To me, I think we win this game. I think we're going to give them maybe nine points, and that's giving them a lot of points. We should score maybe 31 to nine while I'm looking at it. And then don't be surprised if a game go down to the fourth quarter and all of a sudden blow it up, blow it wide open. That's my opinion. But I got hey, I can't get away. I got to make some comments about my man Ryan Day. So you blow up, blow up after the game. I mean, I'm watching you. I'm like, man, I need to get that ball with Sam right now because I got you know, Ryan Day. Ryan Day, good football coach. And you, you, you were right about what you said about Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer had a game plan that he has totally gotten away from. Urban Meyer was a, a, a Earl Bruce, Lou Holtz disciple. Physical football, power, gap scheme play. RPOs, those type of things. That's not who Ryan Day is. So because he's gone more to a passing situation, it benefited us in the long term. Mark Correa made a, a comment. Ryan was brought here to, to beat Michigan. He's not. Well, to all you Ohio State buck ducks up there, who you going to hire? <laughs> who in the world you going to Who's out there you going to hire that's going to do any better? Now, you got to find a way to try to beat Michigan. It's not going to happen. Because we don't keep punching you in the mouth. It's like Mike Tyson always say. They look good till they get in their mouth the first time. And that's what's been going on. It's been Mike Tyson over and right. So, so two, two, na- two names I've heard. Okay. One of them is get, bring Urban back. Urban, hey, Urban. You, you, you force Urban out. <laughs> they push Urban out. So you, you're you going to bring a guy back that you actually pushed out of. They pushed him out. Well, he, so said he, he, wasn't, he said he wasn't healthy, remember? He wasn't healthy. Man, come on. Hey, man, man, uh, hey, 
Man, give me and a And then old boy Zach Smith. He said, hey, man, I didn't distance myself from Zach Smith. I can work again, right? So bring me back to Columbus. I mean, so that's, anyway, that's one name. Mike Vrabel with the with the Titans is the other name I keep hearing. So you're going to tell me, unless Mike Vrabel is in trouble there at, at Tennessee, you with me? You're going to leave the NFL to come back to college to deal with NIL, to deal with recruiting, to deal with the transfer portal. So in the NFL, I have a general manager, a scouting department. They help me go out and get my players. And then I can pay for uh, for athletes to come in. I can pay you to come be part of my team. So you're going to leave the easy part of just coaching ball to go recruit, to deal with NIL, to deal with academics. Sam, <laughs> if he does that, he was a he was a defensive lineman, linebacker, been hitting the head too much. You with me? He needs to go to San Francisco to see the doctors out, the specialists out there for that brain disease that a lot of players have had over the years. Been in the head too much. He been in the head way too much. Mike Ray not coming back to Ohio State. <laughs> he, if he is, he is not crazy. He is crazy. You feel me? Okay, now let's go to Urban Meyer. Every mile sits out one year, and then he goes to the NFL, right? Right. So you gonna tell me was he not sick when he went to the NFL? So he got hundred percent. He got hundred percent healthy. Now, did you see on Netflix the uh, the uh, series about the swamp? Mm-hmm. So now he finally came out and admitted. He said he was having anxiety attacks there. It wasn't his heart. He said I was having. In the show, he said he was having anxiety attack. So all of a sudden now. Those anxiety attacks done disappeared. <laughs> so you gonna come back under that stress again? I man, give me a break. If he come back, he gonna have the same issues he had before. The pressure of the job, it's not gonna change. It comes right back on you, Sam. So you know what? Tell them people down there in Columbus to quit drinking. Quit drinking the moonshine that you guys be making all the time. So you and, say it ain't gonna get no better than Ryan Day is what you're saying? No. Oh, I love no, you, man. No, I love no, 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 no. Ryan Day going to be there. Ryan Day still trying to figure out what he's going to do. If he should have done anything, he should have called Texas a and and go, go get paid seven, eight million dollars of less pressure. They got expectations that they can never achieve there. See, it's like Texas a and I'm a Texas grad, right? And I'm always talking about what they did. They had probably four or five good years over the last 45 years. That's what they had, four or five good years over 45 years, Sam. So what are they talking about? Well, we want to play for championships. When? You're an Aggie. Aggie don't play for no championship. Come on. It's just like Texas a and to me, it's like Michigan State to Michigan. They little brother. Okay? Is Michigan State going to play for championships since the 1968? No. They still little brother. So understand that. So, no. If Braver comes back there, he's been hitting the head too many times. He's got a concussion. He's coming there days. You're not leaving NFL unless he's in a position where they're trying to push him out of the door of Tennessee. Then he might do it. Okay. Urban Meyer, his heart gonna come back and have problems again. Uh, m- maybe he had a heart transplant and got a brand new heart when he went to Jacksonville. But you know what happened to Jacksonville? Let's just to be frank. The pressure of coaching the NFL got to him and he got pushed out of the door again. So uh, you you talking about two situations where any one of those guys come back to Ohio State, they both need to be on medication because they both crazy. <laughs> Hey man, Urban win every week. He get a check. Don't get a sure. don't get an L. Can you talk about everybody else who get L's. I he at home with his family. Yeah, you talking about home spend time with his family? Okay, doing what you're doing. You spend time with your family. He he in good shape. He, he can't win that. What are you making two three million dollars doing that? So why yeah. you gonna come back to the pressure and the headache to recruit all over again to do all of that? Because yeah. if that's the case, his, his, his heart or his anxiety, whatever he had, going to come back. Yeah. And never going to get fired. Hey, I, I wonder, does he have – how come he quit one of them sunshades that he used to wear all the time? Remember when he was on fire, I had them sunshades on? Boy, why did he take them sunshades off? Boy, I, I love, say I love this show. I can say what I want to say. And like I said, what are they going to do? Hey, they going to come fire me? Come on. Tiki, how you doing, Tiki, right there? I, I'm good as go. I can talk about everybody with no recourse. Boy, it's a beautiful thing, man. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. Because you know what I could do? 
I can tell the honest truth from my perspective, and I don't have to be politically correct. My wife says, man, you can't say that. Yeah, I can. We're taking on the van. <laughs> Vance is on, on Medicare, brother. Vance getting Social Security. He's good as gold. <laughs> I laugh every day, Sam. <laughs> Boy, cause, cause, cause you know what a man say, boy, we coming to get you. You got to crunk it up, baby. You got to crunk it up. <laughs> but see, that's what the people love. They love the raw, straight, no chaser fans, folks. If you want to keep seeing the breakdowns, because Michigan, we think Michigan going all the way. He just said, fans just said they're going to win the Big Ten championship game again. That means back in the playoffs, probably in the Rose Bowl. And if they win the Rose Bowl, then we're going to see Vance in H-Town. We're going to see Vance in Houston. You want to help fun? Baby. Yeah, you want to help fund the film study? Click that link in the comment section, and it'll help you fund the, the film study PayPal page. Same thing, it'll the link will be in the description as well. Click it, $5, $10, whatever you can do to help fund the film study, you can click that right there. And, of course, last but not least, we always want to make sure that you know whether it's the breakdowns, the film studies is for you, the people. We don't own this footage. Like when we show footage, we don't own it. We use it strictly for the entertainment, education, and edification of you, the people. That's why we say fun the film study. Because we don't make any money off these videos, but we want to keep doing them. We want to break down the Big Ten Championship. We want to break down the Rose Bowl. We want to break down the national championship. And we need your help to do it. Until then, folks, thanks for watching another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study focused on the defense. With Vance Beffer. We'll see you next time. Go Blue.